Hey everyone, welcome to this video where we're gonna talk about permissions within an AppWrite database. So what I wanna do here is talk about the difference between collection level permissions and document level permissions. And I also wanna show you how to set various permission types. So for example, we wanna be able to set permissions so only the creator of a certain document can actually view and modify that. And then we wanna talk about setting different permission types for different teams. So let's say we have admins within our application. Those specific admins should be able to manage and modify data differently from a standard user. So we're going to learn how to set all these permissions. Okay, so for this video, I've set up a simple application with a database and a collection called notes. So this is going to be like a notes application. And I added some documents with some permissions in here. So we're going to go ahead and actually modify this data and see how things change based on the permissions that we set. So at this point, if we go into settings here, we're going to see the collection level permissions set to any so anybody can create read, update, and delete. So we're gonna use this demo application right here to start modifying it, but the first thing I wanna do here is talk about the issues in this application. So the first thing is, we actually have authentication set up, but right now we're not authenticated and I can still see all this information. In fact, I can even modify this information. I can delete it if I want. And that's the first issue we're gonna fix. We're gonna make sure that only authenticated users can actually view and modify information. But that brings up a second issue because if I'm logged in as Dennis here, Dennis will still be able to see all the items in this specific collection. So Dennis will be able to see Jane's notes. Now in a notes application, you don't want users viewing each other's data. So we're gonna fix that with document level permissions. So we're only gonna give the owner access to their specific documents. So the last thing we're gonna do is actually something that's very commonly needed in applications today. And that's gonna be the ability to assign different permissions to different teams and users within those teams that have specific roles. So we can actually assign permissions to those teams instead of having to manually assign permission to every user. So in our case, we're gonna create an admin team. And if you're on the admin team, you're gonna have more access and more permission in this application. So in our case, admins will be able to view everybody's data and can modify that data. Okay, so let's jump back into our AppWrite console and talk about permissions here within our collection. So we're in the notes collection and we'll go into settings. And this is where we have our collection level permissions. And this is where we enable our document level permissions. So collection level permissions, assign permissions to the entire collection document level permissions give specific permissions to a specific document. So if this is not enabled, those permissions that we have set, even if we have any, will be ignored because we need to make sure this is enabled. And we'll do this in a second. But the first thing I want to do is go ahead and make sure that we only allow authenticated users to be able to view and update data. So we'll go to all users. So this is going to be only authenticated users can create, read, update, and delete. So we'll go ahead and set this. And if we go back into our application, now we see that if you're not authenticated, you can't view this data, that's good. Now I did set up some users here and we're gonna test with these users. So I have Mark, Jane and Dennis. So let's go ahead and actually log in with one of these users. So I'll open this up and I'll just use this fake email, dennis at email.com. I'll enter my password and we'll log in here. So once I'm logged in, we should be able to view this data. So this is where we've now protected our data from unauthenticated users, but Dennis can still go ahead and create items here, but Dennis can also see Jane's information here. So that's something that we wanna fix. So let's go ahead and change up a few things. So in order to do this, let's go back into our collection here and let's go into settings and actually change up our permissions here. So we really need to think about this. So right now, if you're authenticated, you can create, read, update, and delete data. Now there's an issue here because a user should be able to create a document, but the actual permissions should be set on the document itself. So right now, because we're granting collection level read, update, and delete permissions, this means all users can see and modify all data. So we wanna fix this. So let's go ahead and uncheck read, update, and delete. And let's just see what happens here. So right now, even though I'm authenticated, if I go ahead and refresh this as Dennis, I cannot see any documents. So what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and enable document level security. So we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that's updated. And then manually right now, we're just gonna go ahead and update the actual document permissions. And then this will be done automatically as we create documents in the future. So we'll go back to these documents. And if we go to this one right here, complete morning workout right here. So that's the actual document. I can go into overview and here 
now that document security is enabled, let's go ahead and give this to the user of, let's see. No, I don't want to give this to all users. We'll just go ahead and assign it to a specific user. So select users. This will be Jane Doe. So she's the athlete. We're going to give Jane Doe the permission to read, update, and delete. And again, once we do this in the future, this will be done automatically. I just want to update the actual documents. If we select go to practice, let's go ahead and select a specific user. We're going to assign this also to Jane Doe. We'll add it, read, update, and delete. And then we're going to give Dennis permission here. So we're also going to go ahead and go to complete tutorial. So I'm the person making the tutorial. So this is mine now. We'll go ahead and select users. We'll find Dennis. So this is all just through the console if we need to manually override anything. And the last document, so this document right here, because we created it when I was logged in, it already automatically assigned permission to Dennis. So we'll talk about that in a second. So now if I go ahead and go into my application, if I refresh this, now Dennis can only see Dennis's documents. If I log out and I'll log in as Jane, so we'll go to Jane at email.com, enter the password, and now we should only be able to view Jane's information. So the way the application set up, I just have to manually refresh it. And there we go. So one of the things I wanted to mention and reiterate is that anytime we're using the SDK and using the create document method, we can actually set our permissions within that method on create. So whenever we're creating a document, we can pass in the currently authenticated user into that method, assign a specific team, and all those document level permissions will be set. Now, the thing to note here is that if you're currently logged in, so I'm logged in as Jane, these permissions will be given to the current user by default. So you don't exactly have to specify the user that's currently logged in. So you can maybe assign a specific team, but the user is already automatically assigned. So let me show you this. So right now I'm logged in as Jane. If I create this document called one, if I go back to my collection here, in here, if I go to one, I can actually see that Jane was already given the permission of read, update, and delete. So we don't have to manually specify this, but I will show you how to do that if you want to. So the next thing I want to do here is go ahead and talk about how we can actually create admins within our application and give those admins specific permissions. So here we have three users. We have Jane Doe, Dennis Ivey, and we have Mark Zuckerberg. So Mark Zuckerberg is going to be like a super user in our application. So in order to give him full access, we're going to create a team. We're going to call this team super users and let's go ahead and create. And from here, what I'm going to do here is go ahead and just add some team members. We're just going to add Mark here. So we'll go to create membership. We'll do Mark at email.com. So that's the email. This will invite Mark. So I don't need to specify the name. I want to create a role called admin. So within super users, we can assign different roles. So let's go ahead and create that. And here we go. So we see super users. Mark is now a member. Let's go ahead and actually grab this team ID. So we're going to need this in a second. But if we go back here and we go to teams, we can see all the members in here somewhere. So if we go to members, here we go. And we see the role. And then if we go to Mark here, we can go to memberships and we can see all the memberships that Mark has. So he's on the team super users and has this specific role. So let's go back into our collection now, and we can actually assign permissions again at the document level to specific teams. This one's going to be easier to do this at the collection level. So we'll scroll down here and we'll add another role. And at this point, what we could do is we could just go ahead and select a team. So we could just select super users and super users will have the full ability to create, read, update, and delete. Now I want to get more specific than that. So let's say, we want only the admins inside of super users to actually have that permission. So we'll go down to permissions here and we'll go to custom permissions. And here is the format. So I need to specify the team, the team ID, and then the role itself. So let's go ahead and follow this format. It's also right here. So that's why I copy the team ID. So if you've been following along and you want to actually do this manually here, go ahead and do what I'm doing. Go ahead and create team, pass in the team ID, and then we're going to say all admins. So this is the permission for this team and this role. And these people will be able to read, update, and delete. There's no need for them to be able to create because they're already a user. They have that permission. So let's go ahead and update that. So now we just need to go ahead and test it now that that's set. So we'll go in here. We'll log out here. I just want to refresh it. And let's log in as Mark. So we'll do Mark. 
at email.com. We'll go ahead and enter our password. Hit enter and Mark should have the ability to view everybody's notes here. So if we refresh this and we should also be able to actually edit these notes. So if I scroll down here, I see Jane's notes, Dennis's notes, Mark can actually add a note. So we'll just do test here. We'll hit enter. Mark can go ahead and edit Dennis Ivy's note here. We can even delete. So full ability because we have full access. So we actually have another option for assigning different permissions to groups of people. And this is with something called labels. So labels are actually a lot like teams where they accomplish a lot of the same thing, but there are some slight variations between the two. So in our last example, we use the admin scenario where we had admins who had different roles within that team. Well, this could have all been done with labels just as well. And it all really depends on what you're trying to accomplish, what your needs are, and your specific preference. So while teams are great for user management and setting access controls, labels are a little bit more lightweight and flexible for categorizing users. And one example that I can actually think of is where, let's say you have some kind of website where you have resources behind a paywall, where a user can actually pay and then they're assigned a specific label like a premium user or a subscriber. And then all we need to do is simply assign that specific label, all these permissions and access levels to whatever resources they need. So let's go ahead and just jump right in and see how labels work and actually compare the two. Okay, to demonstrate how labels work, what I'm gonna do is create a scenario where a user can be assigned a specific label and then have different access levels based on that label. So right now we have teams of admins. I'm logged in as Mark and Mark is an admin and Mark can see everybody's notes. So let's say if I log in as Dennis, I wanna be able to view everybody's notes. So let's say this is some evil website that offers a premium service where I can see everybody's notes even if they're not my own. So let's go ahead and create a label for a premium user and then Dennis will have access to this based on a label and not a specific team. So in this collection for all the notes here, we see that users can create and then we have document level permissions and then only admin have the read, update and delete authority here. So we're gonna go ahead and change this and set a label for the user of Dennis. So once we click on the user, if we scroll down here, we're gonna see a label option here and we can type in our own labels. What I'm gonna do is just go ahead and use one of these suggested ones. And we're gonna say Dennis is now a premium user. So that's the label that we're gonna to assign to Dennis. And then now in the database, we'll go to the collection. We're just gonna go ahead and give this specific label full access controls. So down in permissions, we'll do add role. We'll select label and the label that we have is premium. So all users that have the label of premium can now read, update and delete. So we'll go ahead and hit update. And right now we're logged in as Dennis. So Dennis is not an admin, but Dennis does have the premium label. So if I refresh this, now Dennis can see everybody's notes. So we have full access. So let's go back into users here and let's just look at the difference between labels here. So labels don't have roles. It's a lot more minimalistic. We simply add like a tag to a specific user and then assign roles to that. Whereas teams can be given full permissions to a team, but then we can assign different roles within the team. So I'm actually gonna follow up with a full video on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed. And we're gonna talk about the difference between labels and teams and really break down the core differences between the two. So for the last part of this video, I wanna show you how you can manually set permissions using the create document method. So whenever we call this method, we actually have another parameter that we can pass in as an optional parameter. And this is gonna be an array and this array will contain each permission that we want to set. So first of all, we wanna import the permission class and the role class. And both of these classes will actually have helper methods in order for us to be able to actually set these permissions. So what I'm gonna do here is just go ahead and paste in some permissions and then I'll uncomment them and show you how this works. So. First of all, if we want to grant our user specific read, update, and delete access, we call the permission class the actual access level, so read, update, and delete. And then we pass along the user ID to role.user. So we pass along the currently logged in user. Now, this is done by default for you, so you don't need to do this. But in this case, we want to just manually pass it in. And we're going to talk about some limitations. So if you want to just start doing this, wait up a couple of seconds as I finish explaining. So. If we wanna go ahead and assign permissions to specific teams, we call the permission class, the access level, so read, update, and delete. And in this case, we call role.team instead of role.user. So here we pass along the team ID and the specific role that we wanna assign it to. So in this case, we don't need to give this access level to all admins. We can just say everybody on this team 
gets access. So this is how we can actually assign these permissions. So let's talk about the limitations here. So the first thing I wanted to mention is the fact that whenever we set a permission and call role.user, this cannot be the ID of another user. So it has to be the ID of the currently authenticated user. Otherwise, if you try to set another user ID in here, it will not work. And there is a workaround with this with the server side SDK, and we'll talk about that in a second. So the next thing is when we call permission.read, update, or delete, and try to set this to a team, this cannot be the ID of a team that we're currently not a part of. So it has to be the ID of a team that we're currently a part of. So let's say I'm logged in as Dennis. If I try to do this, well, this is the ID of the admin team. This will not work. If I'm logged in as Mark Zuckerberg and I try to set this permission to that team, because Mark Zuckerberg is part of the admin team, this would work for that specific user. So you have to be a part of that team in order to set the permission. So with the server side SDKs, things work a little bit differently as far as what we can do with these methods. So we still have access to the permission class, all the helper methods, but we can actually pass along any user ID from the server side SDK. And that's because of the access level and scope that we can set with the API key. So once everything's set up there, we have a lot more flexibility from the server side and that's where these methods would actually make sense. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you learned a bunch. Make sure to give me feedback down in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to the AppRite YouTube channel and I'll see you all in the next video.